Hello there, it's Jilly here from funcrafts2dohome.com. So this video is to show you what I have done with one of my poured acrylic canvases that I wasn't happy with and so I decided to turn it into something that I could use or give as a present or even sell at a craft fair. So you probably like me and experiment with lots of different pouring techniques and maybe you aren't happy with the results but you don't want to throw them away because you spent money on the paints, you took time to do this and you don't hate them entirely but you know there's parts of them that you like, there's parts you don't like. So I chose this one because it's a bit kind of muddy and I decided to take it off the frame using a screwdriver and a pair of pliers. I could have cut this off but I wanted to maximise the area that I could use. And you can see here that once it's off the frame it's pliable, it's bendy and you know it's fabric. So the basis of some of my art journals that I make with my other pieces of art is these pads which is cartridge paper and it's very good quality paper you can sketch draw and I, I even paint onto this paper. I use these backboards as the covers for the journal so first of all I remove the gummed pad of paper and put that to one side because we're going to come back to that later on. Then I remove the front cover and before I throw that cover away I actually use it to measure to divide the backboard in half so I fold this in half and then use it as a measuring guide because I am not very good at using a ruler I can never seem to get my lines to match up so this kind of works for me so I'm dividing this into two and then after this I will take a metal ruler, a surgical scalpel and a piece of glass to cut this in two. Now, you see in a moment I had a disaster with the scalpel blade. You can see it pinging off when the blade snaps. And there it goes. Thankfully it pinged away from me. Now, just a word of caution about safety with scalpels. This is a a safe way of removing scalpel blades. I did a reenactment there because I actually did it off camera to get rid of the, the jaggedy little half piece. I will put a link at the bottom where you can get those um, little boxes for your scalpel blades. So you've got your two halves to make up your cover. You need to put them on the canvas. I used a pencil to draw around where I wanted to cut. You don't need to worry about pencil marks because they come off very very easily with a rubber from acrylic canvases. Once you've got them you put the cardboard on them and turn the edges over and crease them so you can see exactly where your edges are and where you need to stick down. I actually cut the corners of these um, to be square. You can just see there one that I've done. And I used PVA glue, heavy duty PVA glue from a DIY store to stick one of the boards onto the canvas but this wasn't really very successful because I think I used probably too much glue and the other thing is the canvas is very strong and springy and when you come to actually stick the, the sides down over the cardboard if you don't sit and hold it there for quite some time it will spring back up again so I used these mini bulldog clips and I thought great you know this is a really good idea I can just walk away and leave these but no when it was dry and I took them off on the other side on the painting side were some horrible gouges in the acrylic so I wouldn't be able to use this as a gift or even sell it to anyone so I there you go there's the gouges doesn't look very nice so for the next board I used double sided tape which worked fantastically well and I actually do use a lot of double sided tape on my other art journals because it just works really well for me. It's a shame because I would like to have used that as a front cover but obviously I can't because of the gouges. 
So here you see I've cut the corners on the diagonal because it does make a much neater finish when you turn them over to stick onto the cardboard. And so all you really have to do is get some double sided tape and push it down really, really firmly. And there you have a very quick way to stick on your covers. For the insides of the covers, I used this forest green A4 card. And again, I used double sided tape to stick that down. So here's how much double sided tape I put onto the card. And then when I stick it down, I use a brayer to roll over and make sure that every single inch of that sticky tape is in contact with the cardboard and the cover. So the next thing is you need to take the gummed paper pad and make signatures from the pages. This means you tear four pages off at a time and crease them, divide, you know, fold them in half and crease them. When you've folded them you take a bone folder and a piece of plain paper and you then just score down the spine of each to get a razor sharp crease. And in the bookbinding world, signatures are four pages all nested in each other. So what you need to do is take your whole gummed pad, divide it up into fours and do this, exactly what I've done here, until you've you've exhausted your supply of pages and you have a nice neat stack of signatures that you can bind into your covers. Now from here on I was going to show you my binding method which is Coptic binding but really I didn't see any point because there is somebody on YouTube called Sea Lemon and she makes videos about binding and I learned how to do Coptic binding by watching the Sea Lemons videos. So I decided that I was going to put in a link to the to the video that I watch when I do my Coptic binding. And so here you're just watching me make the holes in the boards that I'm going to stitch onto the signatures. But as I said, you really would be better off watching the Sea Lemon video I will put a link underneath. This is just a selection of the threads that I use to bind. I have decided, oh and the needle, I've decided to use a brown wax thread because brown will go nicely with the colours in the acrylic painting. Here is the channel address for the video that I can recommend to you about Coptic binding. And as I said, there is a link below that you can click through to see the video. And here is my finished binding. It's very easy once you have learned the technique. It's the best method of binding that I have found because the pages lay reasonably flat for sketching and drawing. I wanted to put some embellishments on the front so I used my Big Shot cutting and embossing machine to make this border. I did end up cutting it down here because it was too wide for what I wanted. I also decided that I was going to use some Paper Mania ink pads to put some gold colouring on the raised embossed parts. So all I did was just take the ink pad and rub it along gently along the embossed, the raised embossed area. And again, I used double-sided tape to stick that down onto the book. I also made some embellishments from the leftover green card and also the leftover canvas. And I put them, I held them together with these brads that open out at the back. There's, and I used a flower punch. And although the canvas is quite thick, it will 
just about go through the small punches, the, the die cut punches. So there's my finished album. It's a shame I couldn't use that for the front cover, but because of the mistake I made with the bulldog clips, I've decided to put it on the back. Um, yeah, so that that's it. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Please come back soon when I will show you another idea I've had for how I can use parts of my paintings to create things I can use or give away as presents. See you next time and thanks for watching. Bye!